And there is Anthony Durrell himself from Flint, Michigan. Anthony, how are you, my man? I'm all right. How are you? I'm not bad, my man. Uh, first of all, I want to know, uh, how are things going? you got your fight coming up in about 26 days, February 27th. It was just announced on Saturday on Fox, but you are going to be matching up Kyron Davis live on the next Fox show. Uh, how excited are you for that? Very excited, man, just to get get back going. Uh I've been waiting on this for, you know, a long time just to even get back in there and get get some touches. Uh, been in a, been in camp for about two months here. Uh, still got, like you say, 20, 26 days to go. Uh, I'm ready. I feel ready. For two months, typically that I know, uh, you know, training camps go from eight to ten weeks. Uh, is that something that you planned on or were you in camp earlier because something else might have been on the table? Uh, I was in camp earlier. I was supposed to fight Caleb Plant on the 30th. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess he wanted to tune up. But uh, I was ready. I, w- I was going to be ready for that. Uh, I was going to be ready for anything, honestly. But like I say, it's, uh, it is what it is. Uh, the fight will be made, you know, when it's made. But right now we got Kyron Davis on, the, uh, on our plate. And that's what I'm focused on. You said that there was a possibility of you being an opponent for Caleb Plant in which he fought Caleb Truax on Saturday night. What I want to know from you is, so you said you don't know what happened. Uh, you know, you were ready to, to take the fight. Was it, were there serious discussions for that fight? I, mean, I, I'm I, just was, here, to get I was here for, I was here uh, His team knew that. That's why we were in camp. Uh, but like I say, things don't always go as, as planned, especially with boxing. Uh, he, I guess he wanted to tune up. Uh, I never, I, I didn't care who I fought. Uh, but it, like I say, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to be ready regardless of who it is. And, uh, I'm still going to uh, be ready on the 27th. That, that just had me be here an extra four weeks. Uh, but like I say, I'll be I'll be ready. I'll be full in effect ready uh, for my fight on the uh, 27. We'll get back to plan in moving forward or in the next few questions. But let's preview Kyron Davis because that's who's going to be standing across the ring from you on February 27th, live on Fox 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Can you preview uh, Kyron Davis and what you see from him? Uh, a very come forward fighter. Uh, he's a little smaller guy. I expect him to be a little quicker. Uh, but I, I'm just going in there prepared to do my job and, and prepared for our game plan. That's take care of business. Uh, you know, as you know me, Ray, I'm going in there looking for a knockout, and that's with anybody. Uh, if it comes, it comes. If it don't, you know, we can still go 12. But uh, I, I'm ready for whatever. Anthony is that after your fight you know we were you know I've known you for a while and I know that you casually mentioned that you know my career might be winding down but after the fight with Benavidez I feel like that you I see like that that look in your eye like man I can give it a go for the next few years is that accurate to say uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see. Uh, me being a competitor, uh, with the David Benavides fight, I thought I uh, did pretty, pretty damn good. I think I was uh winning the fight before the cut. Uh, but like I say, people had their own opinions and whatever. But my opinion, uh, I was like, before the cut, I think I was boxing them really good. But me being a a a, a, a competitor, I just can't end on a loss. Uh, I have to keep going and, and prove to everybody that I am what I am, and that's a champion. Uh, so, you know, that's that that's my mentality of why I'm why I'm going to keep going for right now. That fight reignited that fire from you. I mean, you had co-main event slot, Staples Center. That place was rocking, pay per view, and it's like you know the dog still has quite a bit of bite left. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not a quitter. I'm not. A, I'm not going to give up if I if I set my mind to something. Uh, I'm going to do it. 
Uh, and that's, that's, that's how I feel. That's, that's my mentality. That's been my mentality for a long time. And I, like I said, I'm just ready to fight on the 27th. I think I've been in camp a long time and away from my family for a long time. Uh, and I'm just ready to, you know, go in there and give it what I got. Right now you are, you're from Flint, Michigan. You're very proud of where you're from. You give a lot back to the community with the charitable things that you do. I think it's very admirable. But where are you right now? Where is your training camp for this fight? Uh, I've been in Florida. I've been in Delray. I've been training at the big time boxing and, uh, and what, what is it? Uh, big time boxing is in Boing B, Boca, Boca Raton. Sorry, I said Boing B, Boca Raton. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm here down here in Florida. I've been, like I said, I've been down here since December 1st. So, uh, I'm ready, man. Uh, just went 12 rounds today in the boxing ring with three different people. So, I'm ready. Who's your trainer? Still Sugar Hill? So, yeah, Sugar Hill. He'll be he'll be there till the end. Uh, uh, Briny Hudson, BB Hudson is my uh, condition coach, and uh, just you know, been working, man. Just staying staying ready for whoever they put in front of us away from your family for such a long time. Are you going to take off that frustration and the sacrifice on Tyron Davis on February 27th live on Fox? Uh, we'll just stick to the game plan. Like I say, uh, we go in there with a game plan every time. If the, if the, if the knockout comes, it comes. If it don't, it don't. Uh, but I'm going in there looking for it. But I can still go 12 rounds uh, with these. And uh, I, I plan on I plan on knocking him out in the in the fight. Uh, so you know he better bring his uh, he better bring his concrete boots. I know that these are some strange times that we are living in with COVID nineteen and you know this worldwide pandemic. Has training camp been any different from you? This is your first fight in the bubble and within, you know, the COVID-19 era. So what have the challenges been for you to deal with preparing for your fight and also making sure that you're safe with uh, COVID-19 and all the protocols? Uh, just staying safe, just staying away from uh, big crowds, uh, staying just with my team, you know, that I know is okay. Uh, I'll go visit my brother every now and then, but not even uh, like that, uh, especially not now, but, uh, just just staying safe, going to the gym and coming straight back to the house. There's nothing more else to do, especially with this pandemic going on. Uh, you know, you got you to gotta stay safe or to mess up the fight or just mess up more things. So just staying, just staying you know, around a certain people that I'm around in camp and, and being cautious. Can help you focus more. For your fighter, are you one of those people that you like to have a lot of people around you during training camp and, and stuff like that? No, no, it uh, you know, the people around me is 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 the people around me all the time in camp. You know, I'm comfortable. The only, like I said, the only thing I'm missing is my family. Uh, but you know, it's sacrifice that you got to take, especially in this game, to 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 get where you want to get or do what you want to do. So that that that's the thing you got to take sacrifice to where you want to go. Well, uh, physically, you know, I know that you know you've been in the game for a long time. Do you feel better now than what you did when you were younger, or, or what is that like? Because we hear from fighters as they get older that you know that they're a lot smarter. They know how to train and not overexert themselves in the gym. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you like you pick up on on things, especially been in the game as long as I have. I, my first fight was two thousand five, so that's that's a long time, especially for professional. So I, uh, you know, you pick up on things, certain little things, and, and and you increment them into your your schedule or your your workout, and that's what I've been doing. I'm I'm fine. I'm I'm uh, focused. I'm not tired. I'm still I still feel good. Uh, I guess that's why I keep I, – I'm going to keep going. I uh, still feel good. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to – you can't let you can't let that age catch up to you because it's it's some young bulls in this, uh, in this game, and you don't want that to, 
you know, come back to haunt you. Raised with an old school mentality coming into the sport of boxing, you know, being at the Kronk Boxing Gym, you know, you have Javon Sugar Hill, who is the nephew of the late great Emmanuel Stewart. Are you glad and how much did you learn from, you know, being under the guidance of Emmanuel and learning those old school values at the Kronk Gym? Uh, it, it was cool. You know, uh, Emmanuel really respected my grandfather, you know, because he really had his own opinion. So it was cool, you know, to even see a legendary trainer like Emmanuel Stewart. And then now to have his nephew training me, which is Sugar Stewart, it's, it, it's amazing because they have some similar tactics. Uh, I think Sugar Hill is, is a little bit more technical and, and want everything crisp and sharp. Uh, Emmanuel, of course, he wanted the same thing, but he wanted you to really knock a dude out. So that's, uh, I think that's the real difference. You, Anthony, is you're very disciplined when it comes to your training camp. You like to go away. You like to put yourself in that warrior mentality. And I feel like that was instilled upon you from the very beginning over the course of your career. Definitely. It was, uh, we, uh, we live, eat, sleep boxing, man, especially when we was growing up. That's all we did. Had to run to school, uh, you know, and do little things before school. Uh, but that it, boxing is, was our life. That's what we did. We, uh, but, and I'm thankful for it because without, without my grandfather pushing us to be where we are today, we, we wouldn't be here. So, you know, I, I'm thankful that he, he did that. Cancer, you went ahead and you became a world champion. Where does the motivation lie for Anthony Durrell to keep fighting in the prize fighting game? Uh, just doing it for my kids, showing them that, you know, it's no quitting. It's uh, if you if you set your mind on something, you finish it. You don't you don't uh you don't give up right in between it. You go through with it. You see everything through, and uh, that that's what I do it for. I do it for my family, my kids, and uh, of course the fans, uh, because they deserve a hundred percent of Anthony Durrell, and uh, I plan on giving it to them if I say that I can, or if I'm still in the game. You know that I'm giving my hundred percent. Thoughts on the rest of the super middleweight division. So I'm going to go ahead and just run some names by you and get your thoughts. You know, the first one, you're going to be fighting on February 27th. Also, Canelo Alvarez is going to be fighting Abney Yildrum, who is a man that you went ahead and, and you fought and you beat. So what is your take on that? Were you surprised that Canelo is going to be fighting a guy that, you know, you went ahead and defeated? Yeah, I'm surprised with the WBC, honestly. Uh, I, I like the WBC a lot. Don't get it wrong, but this was a bad move. Uh, the guy hasn't fought in two years, and the last person he's fought was me. And it's – I just don't understand how a guy that lost, you know, for the belt is mandatory for it. Uh, I think it was a bad fight. But Canelo, you know, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's he's fighting his mandatory. Uh, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's, just, it's just the WBC put – Abney in there for the mandatory, and I don't think that was the right move. About also David Benavides. There's talk that Benavides, you know, this is the discussion that he is penciled in to fight March 13th, potentially against Ronald Ellis on Showtime. What is your interpretation of, of Benavides? And also, as you look at that fight, uh, Benavides is Benavides. He's a, he's a great fighter. As I said, you know, in my post interview with after the fight, uh, he's a great, great fighter, great champion. Uh, some things happen with him on a scale, uh, and the other thing, but you know, people make mistakes. Uh, do you need to be professional in this sport? I think you just have one job to do and that's make weight and fight. Uh, yes, they do. And, and, and I don't think he was really professional, really, uh, for that, for that, uh, that time. Maybe the pandemic got a hold to him. Say, excuse you, come to 
you come to a job to work and, and, and do everything that's required for you at work, but he's still a hell of a fire. You can't take that away from him uh, with David Benavides. What about Caleb Plant's performance over Caleb Truex? And just to go ahead and put it out there, you defeated Caleb Truex in pretty impressive fashion. Plant had a unanimous decision victory, won every single round across the board. But I know that on your social media, you were a little vocal about Plant's performance. Do you want to go ahead and tell us, you know, I heard some hearsay about it, but what did you think of Caleb Plant's performance against Caleb Truex? Uh, I think he moved up in competition and everybody's seeing it. I think he looked like shit, honestly. Uh, he was scared to get hit. He got tired in the seventh, eighth round, uh, but he got the job done. Uh, I think that's the main thing. Uh, you get the win, but he still didn't look like Caleb Plant did with the taxi drivers or tomato cans or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but he, like I said, he got the win. He got the W, and uh, I'm happy for him. You guys line up, right? When it comes to, as I'm looking at it, he fought a couple of days ago, two days ago. You're going to be fighting in about a month's time. You guys are similar when it comes to lining up fight schedule-wise. Do you think that, assuming everything goes your way on February 27th live on Fox against Kyron Davis, and with him doing what he did, that you guys might square off sometime springtime, early summertime? Is that a possibility? Is that something you're going to go after? Uh, I hope so. But uh, the way that he fought, I think Canelo will call him out and he'll take it uh, just because of the performance he had. Uh, but I hope so. I hope he uh he steps up and fights somebody. I don't know what to say. I just hope he fights somebody. I don't think he fought nobody yet. You know, any one of, of significance then yet? Is that what you're telling me? I mean, Uskatagi. He be, he beat Uskatagi, and he beat him in, in spectacular fashion. I think I I was there to call a fight with you. Uh, he beat him. He beat him. And he really beat him. Uh, I think that was his best performance yet. Uh, but he still got a lot of work to do. I don't think he fought the elite fighters that he's supposed to fight, especially holding the belt. I think he, after his, his title defenses, he fought tomato cans. And everybody will say that. I don't care if it's his mandatory or not. Uh, mandatories are always not they're, – they're not always who you want to go after. You want to go after the big fights, and he hasn't fought a big fight name yet. Like, he hasn't fought nobody. If Plant decides to wait for, you know, Canelo, then that puts you in an interesting position. So I'm looking at names like Daniel Jacobs. You know, also, there's talk about maybe Jamal Charlo moving up to 168 as well. Are those two fights that could interest you? I'll fight anybody. I'll, like, I, I, don't, I don't mind. Like, I, don't, I haven't shied away from nobody ever. In my whole boxing career, and that's not me. I fight whoever they put me in front of. Very proud of where you're from in, in Flint, Michigan. I mean, as I talked about earlier, you've done a lot for the community. But how much do you wear Flint, Michigan and put Flint, Michigan so close to your heart? Because you're all about your hometown and where you came from, where you were raised. Uh, Flint, Michigan is... It's me. It's a part of me. It's, a, it's, a, it's instilled in me. Uh, I'm just, I'm happy that I'm from there. Great. A lot of great athletes come out of there from football to boxing to basketball to soccer, everything. Like anything that you name, they come out. Of, a lot of players have come out of Flint. And I'm just happy that I can say that I'm from Flint. Brother, I mean, talk about a, a boxing brother tandem as you guys gone ahead and have done quite a bit over the course of your career. When you guys were growing up, did you think that you both would achieve the heights that you have earned? Uh, we was, we, we was, my grandfather instilled it in us. He said we would be champion and, and he didn't lie. Uh, he said that since we first started boxing, that was at age uh, nine for me and 10 for him. But we, he, he said that they'll be champion in the future, and he didn't lie. Now, he look at here, I'm two-time world champion. 
and uh, I'm still going. So uh, it, it was just a reality that it happened the way that it happened, especially after me coming off of, of cancer and a motorcycle accident. Everything that happened, I guess, was supposed to happen that way, and I wouldn't change. All right, go ahead and looking at your career, you've been a part of Premier Boxing Champion since the beginning. How much of an influence has being a part of PBC done for you and your life and also, you know, being guided by your advisor, Al Heyman? Uh, Al, Al did a lot for me. Uh, we, we talk often. Uh, PBC has has done a lot. You know, they have made us a household name, put put boxing back on uh, just national TV, on Fox and on FS1. And, and that's the thing. You know, when you can become a household name, especially in the sports world, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I just I, – even, even in the background, Sylvia Brown, like she does so much for every, every fighter, Brittany – uh, does a lot for our fighters. It's just so many people in the background that never give thanks, get get thanks for what they do. And uh, I, I'm happy for it, that, to be a part of the team, PBC team. Al Heyman, I'm, I'm just happy for it. Yeah, that's what I see about you, Anthony, is that you're very appreciative of those that, that help you out and, you know, on a daily basis. It's a part of their job, but still, as you mentioned, you know, the, the Sylvia Brown Owens of the world are very much to like a family atmosphere is, is what I gather from you. Definitely. I mean, I, I think you got to be. I think, you know, we're premier. I think we're all family. Uh, I think we're all family with premier and, uh, you know, you treat everybody accordingly. You treat everybody, you know, how they treat you or even a little bit better because they're putting in a lot of work in the, in the background and people don't understand all the work that it takes to get to uh, where we at. So happy that, like I say, I'm a part of PBC. Seventh live on Fox. What kind of statement are you going to make against Kyron Davis in the main event live on Fox, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time? A uh, big one. Uh, like I said, I plan on going in there and getting a knockout. Uh, if it don't come, I'll go 12 rounds and whoop them all the whole 12. I don't plan on losing the round. I think that's what we're working on in camp right now, and uh, you'll see February 27th. How cool is it for you to be headlining live on Fox Network TV on February 27th? It's a, it's a, it's an honor. Uh just, just this is like a dream, you know. Some, you know, to to even have your own card. So I, I'm just honored and uh, just to be in this position that uh, Alan Hammond put me in. With can you tell us the story about why you are known as the dog? I remember being at many of your fights, especially during the weigh-ins, and your team is barking everything else. I mean, I, I love how animated. Uh, your team is and how focused you are, how determined. Where does that nickname come from? Uh, just from me being an amateur, I, I never let up. I never always coming at the coming to get somebody. If I, you know, so they gave me the nickname the dog, uh, and that grew on me from, from and went to me with the professionals, and uh, I just never let it go. Thank you so much for your time, man. Looking forward to seeing you in less than a month out in LA live on Fox. Have a great one. Always enjoy talking with you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it.